What's good, Ken Gonda? It's your boy, O'Shea Duke Jackson. I'm back at it again with another interview here on the channel. And guys, come in and like the video. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, you know, I, I've been uh, dealing in, in Pan-African content, I would say, uh, for about the last three to four years, even before I had this channel. Uh, and one of the good brothers that I met from the Search for Mahuru channel, because, you know, me and him are personal friends. We're from the same city. Uh, and that is Brother Bomani. And Brother Bomani, before even the you know the ghana scene got popular he's an og in repatting the ghana and tourism in ghana he's been uh, doing it for a long time but i'll let him introduce himself and what his channel is about go ahead brother all right greetings family this is bomani tamba and our business is called africa for the africans tourism investment and uh, we provide tourism service from for mainly the african diaspora that's looking to connect to the african continent for their roots, culture, reconnecting, looking to do business, investing, and looking to just get proper connection on the continent. Uh, and the other business that we have is called Black Star Pan-African Community. It's a community that me and my colleagues and brothers and sisters have put our money together and acquired land, and we're building a community, and we're looking to reach out to Africans in the diaspora or Africans on the continent that want to live and do business with us where we can put our money together and do corporate uh, corporate economics uh, and really just put our energy together to compete with the likes of uh, the different groups that are dominating Africa, the Indians, Chinese and other Asian group, the Lebanese and other um, Arab groups, and then, you know, other the others are uh, also. And it's just that time uh, for us to just take it to that level. So I've been doing business in Ghana from 2006 uh, to 2021. And I've been to Ghana 19 times and I've taken a lot of people to Ghana over the period of time. And other countries that we have had in our tour rotation is Togo, Benin, uh, Senegal, the Gambia, South Africa, Tanzania. And uh, that shows um, the energy of just us uh, literally just, um, just doing our best to just share our experience on the African continent and show people what's going on and connect them to the right people. So it is, it is, it is a business that I've grown and uh, we're just looking to this get people more access to information and I provide a lot of details on my platform itself, our website, which is mm -hmm. Africa for the Africans.org. And that's where I have this, all of the contents from the, mm -hmm. you know, the land, the tours to where people can easily communicate with us. And it's, we have a history of this videos right now. I have 2,750 videos on YouTube and I've been on YouTube since, um, I want to say about 2006, 2007. And mm -hmm. it's just all content that's ready for individuals to share and, and connect with, with us. Okay. All right. Good. No, now, Brother Bomani, you, you've been out. I remember when I first met you and that was um, the year of return. Was that 2019 or 2020? Uh, year of return, uh, 2019. And I want to say we met probably uh, the year before that. Year before that. Okay. And so when I looked at your track record, it, it was obvious that, uh, you know, guys like you and even in Dynas, before there was this big buzz about going to Ghana, you were already specializing in it, right? So that's one thing you're you've been in the game a long time, uh, and now you know there's other countries that have come um, to popularity. At first, it was just really Ghana, and now you're seeing Tanzania, a lot of African Americans going there, uh, Senegal. Um, now you see uh, the Gambia is probably one, probably the most popular outside of Ghana now, and yeah, then yeah. you know there's. There's my there's my favorite. There's Uganda. Right. And so you have all these different options. And um, and then, you know, there's Ghana and it's, it's developing. But in your opinion, what what makes Ghana the one of the more attractive places for African-Americans to either visit or repatriate to? Well, perfect. Uh, and um, I can share a few different things. Number one, um, their first president, Kwame Nkrumah, was a student of uh, you know, our black power movement here in the U.S., so when he brought uh, his connection over to um, you know, Ghana, he always thought about the African diaspora and he always loved the energy of what we were doing and fighting against our oppressors and you know trying to put things together for our people. So Kwame Nkrumah laid that foundation down and on to modern day, a few other presidents have been pushing it. And then now, you know, the current president, you know, ever since like, the 2019 year of return, he's, you always see him in YouTube videos telling our brothers and sisters from the African diaspora that Ghana is your home. And also you have had many government officials that have visited places like Jamaica and different parts of the Caribbean, South America, and also come to different parts of America and then push the energy for us to return home. Uh, so, and the, the, the crazy thing about it is 
it, it, it's it's not a whole bunch of countries it's just one country really ghana other countries have gotten on the bandwagon now which is fine because sometimes you need that one country and then uh when you get to ghana itself it's full of roots culture and then the main attraction that attracts all of us is elmina and cape coast african holocaust dungeons where many of our ancestors were stolen and mm -hmm. ghana still represent where majority of the african holocaust dungeons were so when we hear about wanting to return to our roots and learn about what happened to our stolen African ancestors, Ghana has those things set up to where you can come and check them out, get your spiritual connection in the dungeons. So those are some of the reasons. And then Ghana itself is just a vibrant country. Uh, Accra is a vibrant city and there's just so much to do. You have a lot of cultural events and things like that. And plus, you know, Ghanaians are very just, you know, cool people, um, friendly and people you can build good relationship with. And I'm from Jamaica and me going to Ghana is kind of like walking across the street. We just have so much similar connections from the food, the vibes, the name, the energy. And I feel completely at home in Ghana. So once I went there in 2006, I just, you know, I was just, I just kept on going back and going back and then putting more work in and bringing people there. And it just became a situation now where more and more of us are getting citizenship. And now people feel a lot better now that they can get the papers they need and get and have their legal entitlement to their land and things like that. So there's no other country I can think of that has all those things in place. You know, Sierra mm -hmm. Leone is offering citizenship based on DNA. Mm -hmm. but, uh, I've not done my DNA. The scariest thing is if I was trying to go to Sierra Leone and I wanted that citizenship, maybe I wouldn't be able to get it because I don't have that DNA. But I'm sure they have another program. But the fact that they, they even offering a program is the most important thing because you can just start from that one program and expand. So uh, big up to my brother, uh, you know, Goenham and, uh, you know, Dinah Samir literally that's who have their Sierra Leone citizenship and it's just a beautiful thing I'm just very impressed by that and I mm -hmm. appreciate the work that they're doing in, in that country our Sierra Leone because we need more people to connect to more country at, at one point the Gambia I thought was going to be the next country online where we get uh, you know citizenship and things like that but after so much drama uh, that you see going on the line about the Gambia it, it throws things off so what I'm telling everyone we got to get our you know our diplomats in the different countries and work together to connect with the government and connect with uh, influential people like attorneys are very influential you get a few of them on your side they will help you you know navigate and connect with the law and that's what we have done in ghana we have a good brother called dr malana he's been there for 47 years and he's been the pinnacle of the reason why we have gotten the citizenship because he has went as far as educating uh, government officials and uh, you know and people in the legal world about why the African diaspora is important and why we should create more opportunities for them. So all those things are in place in Ghana and it has just mm -hmm. made it to where, you know, we can really just build a foundation there. Mm -hmm. Let me let me talk about this because, you know, a lot of people are going to other countries. Um, now, you know me, I picked Uganda and I had uh, Brother King Obatunda that came on and talked about, um, you know, he had recently went to Tanzania and talked to some people in the Tanzania was quite difficult and the many people um, we're leaving Tanzania. Um, but, you know, we, 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 we hear about uh, some of the opportunities that are available across the, you know, African continent. And uh, Ghana has some, you know, it's definitely has a little bit more better infrastructure. Some of the other countries right now are just getting a lot better. But what are the opportunities? Because, you know, for a lot of African-Americans or people in the African diaspora, whether they be in Britain or coming from the Caribbean, have never been to Africa and want to, you know, see if their skill sets match with Ghana. Um, what are some of the opportunities that are available in Ghana and how how and how can one transition if they've never, um, you know, lived in Africa before or even visited? But let's say, for example, they like it, you know, what, what, what advice would you uh, would you give them on what the opportunities are there and how to go about achieving those things? There? Well, perfect. Um and I can I can just um, just go in this direction uh, since we have it set up already. Uh, you can come on a tour. I'm not saying that they have to come on a tour, but uh, coming on a tour open things up because now you have accommodation things set up for you. And now you when you get to the country, you can kind of focus and do your networking. And uh, what we have is like business and investment conference. So you're gonna meet uh, uh, judges, attorneys. You're gonna meet people that work at the lands commission. You're gonna meet other African diaspora. And you're gonna meet this other professionals that you can connect with. So that's the number one thing uh, is if you're trying to do business, we got people there that you can connect and do business with. And the business range from uh, the business I'm in is um, information system uh, technology. This uh, as a, a 
business administrator and a technical administrator. So those opportunities are available. Also, uh, if you're just heavy into construction, if you, if you want to bring any kind of business that you have, you can get it built there, uh, especially if you want to just invest in like factories, import, export. Uh, you can get into um, farming, which is always a great business. The key thing I always say about this is when we do this kind of business, we have to kind of remember about what we could have done more in America or what we have tried to do, which is uh, put more of our money together and connect more of us together in more of a group energy and do business together and then work with our um, Ghanaian or African partners in that specific country. And mainly, we definitely always have to get a group of people, get your legal team together. That's one of the most important thing. And that's what we have been, that's the last set of things that we have worked on. Now, for the first time, we know are no more judges and attorneys and barristers and people who are in the legal world. And they're, they, you know, they're really just interested in really doing more business with us. But unfortunately, you know, the issue that people run into is that they trust the wrong people. So that's what we're here as a kind of a guidance um, to help people connect and make it work. But you can literally build an empire. But the issue is that if you don't have those things in place, it doesn't work. So once they get there with us and they decide that they want to get this land and they want to build a business or they want to open up an office and get things going, those things become a lot easier. And then we can always get quotes and get you know, and then have our business people find out information for them. So it's mm -hmm. something that is just really honestly based on what people are really into and want to do. But one of the things we just got to do, honestly, brother, everything that I'm wearing, I'm not sure what you're wearing. Uh, it's probably made in China, right? Right. <laughs> so that's the best opportunity right there. Uh, manufacturing to make everything made in Africa. So with that, you need land, lots of land. You need warehouse, you need sewing machines, you need industrial machines and things like that. So that's on a high level. And if you just want to do basic business, tourism, is is one decent business to do uh in africa transportation is another great business uh having a bus line and uh also does heavy machines because ghana is one of those countries along with this everywhere i've gone in africa what you see building building if you leave from one country and you go back there two three years later it looked completely different and what you see is a lot of this development going so you can also get into that but also what i'm saying family is there's literally no limitations on what you can do but what you always have to have is that that full team that I mentioned and it will get done because I've seen people come there, get things accomplished. And I've seen people come and they kind of you know want to separate themselves and just only deal with certain type of people. And it's just not going to work. You got to organize with your African diaspora and organize with your, the people on the continent, especially the ones who can help you. Before we get before we get into the project that you have going on with the new community that you guys are going to be building. Let me ask you this because, you know, I, when I started wanting to do things in Africa, I took the, um, the rugged, the rugged approach of, you know, getting some things set up, going back to the States or coming back to Europe where I was at, still working, sending things there, sending money there, getting things established, going back to check on the project, making sure everything is going to the day, effectively communicating with people, leaving, coming back. Um, you know, as far as before I was able to fully move and, and, and do things, it took me almost like a two year process. I mean, obviously I didn't have a resource like, you know, 15 years experience of like what you have or other people. I kind of had to figure it out for myself, but um, do you have certain people that might still do that? You know, like they set some things up, they go back to tend to their daily day life, they're working, trying to save more money, trying to de develop the project, checking on the project and stuff like that. Uh, most people do what you did. Uh, and that's, uh, that's and then even if they don't do it exactly like how you did, uh, some of them uh, come as a way of the uh, tourism way. But it, it's still that process that takes you a few years. Like I haven't spent no more than six uh, weeks in uh, Africa. And it's, you know, you, you know, when you, you know, and that's mainly because I have my child yeah, that's in school and I'm limited on those things. Uh, but it takes a while to, to put things together. And other things that we have in place is, uh, you know, we have people who can be supervisors and management of your project. Uh, so that helps. And then we have a situation where we have the, the legal team that can help you get your residency and your citizenship, because that's another thing, too. When you go to any country, you can only stay there that long. And not all of us are going to be able to get like student visas and things like that. So that's why we have to do what we, we're doing. But yes, everyone has been doing it the way you have done it. And now I have a new generation of people. They're literally selling their house and they're moving to Ghana or moving to Africa. And then they are just, you know, they're just kind of learning as they go along. 
but the good thing about it, um, we you know we have their back, so we've been helping them make sure things are a lot more organized and just helping them along the way. So you know each you know so different people have different circumstances. Some people can just get up and move like that one you know do the one and done, and then others just need that time. But we always recommend that you spend multiple time going back and forth to a country, even if it's two or three times, because you you need to make sure that you're sure about what you're getting into because it's a long term commitment because you can't give up what you I've built in America, your job, your career, and things that you have, and then go to Africa and then just you know make it waste away. You know whatever you mm. whatever you gave up, you definitely got to make sure it works in Africa. So it's a situation mm. that people are determined, and um, and that's what I'm saying. Along the way, some people are making bad mistakes, and that's why I want to be the one available to help uh, people because we have a lot of people in different countries, and they're willing to just help each other out. Uh, so I'm sure when you got there, also you started meeting some good people that was very fruitful in your growth and everything that you found out that you can trust. Right. Absolutely. Now, let me let me talk about this and and um, shout out for you talking about good people and meeting them all, along the way. Um, so I want to talk about your project that you have going on. Um, I've seen some other YouTubers talk about it, right? And uh, <laughs> you know, it's, what's the misinformation? But um, but you you know you're you're a guy. That is building. Um, and I know Dr. Eric Hanna, who was formerly with the with the African Union, was was trying to do something similar like this, but in um, in Southern Africa. But let's talk about the project that's going to be that you're going to be developing for the diaspora for repats, um, and and what it will entail, and what what are some of the ideas going on here? All right, perfect. Uh, so, family, we started um, an organization called Black Star Pan African Community. And uh, what we have is uh, the business incorporation. We have the land uh, survey, which is 15 acres. We have a lease and also we have a land search. And those are the legal documents you need to have. And then we have a designated uh, attorney that works with us that helps us with all the legal uh, situation. Uh, he does the deeds for the, the individuals who have their land. And uh, we have a, a designated surveyor. He does their individual survey so they can have what they need to get their homes built. And then we have you know the connections and places like uh, the, the department that does the building permits and uh, we have good people in the lands commission also. So all of that make it to where you can get into development. And then we, I've always had a group of people for a long time that I've always been rolling with us um, as far as looking to get land and looking to build business in Ghana and looking to this, you know, build their homes. So the community is uh, 15 acres. Then we have an additional 57 acres the 15 acres is paid in full now the 57 acres we're making payments on and as we get new members we'll keep making payments until we you know straight up pay it off completely and then give more and more people access to building additional residential but also half of that is for you know for literally um you know commercial you know we have about 10 acres for farming we have one acre for situations like um a business center community center medical center education center uh, community store, basic uh, space if someone wants to build, you know, their own business building and things like that, and then land for other things that people want to get involved with. But it's literally a community that's set up mainly for the Africans in the diaspora, repatriating, and also the Africans on the continent that are that you know that want to join us. And some may, you know, they may end up the local people that's in the Ghana. There's so many different communities that's along with our communities, and it's just all Ghanaians. And, uh, and things like that. So our community that we're building will be the more diverse community. It's gonna have people from Ghana, different countries in Africa. And some of the people that are born in African continent, when they live over here and they see what we're doing, they say, you know what, uh, you're moving, you know, I, I wanna move to Ghana with you, uh, but I like what you guys are doing. Because some people honestly like the energy of the, the black energy that we have in America. Even though I'm from Jamaica, um, you know, I have this, this strong connection energy with my brothers and sisters in America, uh, people call African Americans or Black Americans, and I'll be the first person to tell everyone, this is the best, best land mass where you're going to get the best set of Black people to do anything that can combination have the skills, the background, have the the financial resources and things like that. And then the next one is like the Caribbean islands because the people in the Caribbean are more, you know, into what's already going on in Africa, and it's more similar connected. So those are my two base of you know connecting with people. But then I also have to always look at the Nigerians and the Ghanaians that come over here and the ones that come here and move back and may want to get involved with it. Because ultimately, 
we're trying to just create something to where we can all put our energy together and we can compete, as I was talking about before, with the different groups of people there in Africa that we feel like, you know, well, others just come to the African continent and take advantage of opportunities. So I'm always telling my brothers and sisters here in America that, you know what, the opportunities that uh, the Asians and the Arabs are, are taking advantage of, you know, which, you know, it's, it's, it's opportunities. So if they're more hungry than us, they're going to take advantage of it. But these are opportunities that are for us to take advantage of. And we have to make sure that we take advantage of them because if we don't, then uh, all the foreigners come into Africa and build up everything. We're going to be legally working for them, begging them for jobs, begging them for opportunities. And, you know, you have a, a whole new situation that we, that's maybe just worse than the, the European colonization of the African continent. Uh, so that's uh, the program. You know, it's literally just it's it sounds basic and everything. But when you put that energy together, you're really trying to organize yourself on a basic level to do big time business, even trying to connect with the Nigerians that are looking to do, a, you know, looking to create a fleet full of aircraft to go back and forth from West Africa to the Caribbean islands. They already started an inaugural flight and they did one or two charter flights and things like that. But uh, that will just open more things up. So as different groups of people put things together and we make it clear that we are a, a global force of black people working together, uh, that would change the dynamics of it. But uh, yeah, literally, um, that's you know, our company is called Africa for the Africans. So everything and the key word is Africans. You know, when you think of Africans, people mainly think of black people on the African continent. Uh, so in that case, everything has to focus around that foundation but also the other aspect of africans is those of us the africans in the diaspora and like i consider myself an african jamaican okay okay let me let me let me ask you this because you know um in, in building a new community you know as far as um you know is how many people are you looking for to, to that that could join this community and if you could say, do they have to have a certain level of, is there a certain skills that you want in this community for people to have, you know, vocational skills that you think that would make this community successful that you're trying to build? Well, perfect. Uh, right now we have 65 people and um, most of those 65, well, at least 50 of them uh, have land on the first 15 acres. So the next um, phase that we have is additional 130 something plots. So you're looking at anywhere from 150 to 200 people in the community. And as far as the, the age range, uh, it goes from this, you know, the, the baby in the stomach all the way to a hundred years old, if you can make it there that age. Uh, we have no limitation on the age and we have no limitation on the skills. Uh, always looking for, I have a military background. I'm a US Navy aircraft technician. And um, I you know, appreciate the, the training of how the military train you to be a profession. So I, I still have friends, uh, in the military that have uh, great skills and I also have civilian friends that work uh, you know, from the Atlanta airport or people that's into my same craft as far as aviation, but also information technology and just people who have the skills that you normally have in America, the, the various skills that you can contribute to building and grooming a community. Uh, so there's, uh, you know, so you need honestly a little bit of everything um, uh, together. So little by little, we're getting a little bit of that. And then when you find out there's things that you don't have, you get into training mode. We have a young population uh, from you know, my child that's 11 to the children in the community at the orphanage and in the town and in our actual community. You know, we can recruit and train. And that's why we have a business and a community center. We're going to be using those spaces to just do ongoing classes. We're going to have Ghanaian professionals come in and profession, uh, profession or professionals from, um, you know, from the diaspora and this other country. And we're just going to get our training on. Uh, and that's why we have a nice education building that we look to build and things like that. So it's um, it's a full fledged operation that we're just building from the ground up, and um, we're just gonna grow it little by little, and we're gonna work together with each other. And um, you know, people also talk about we can't work together, but I have 65 people in a group together that put their money together, so we can do what we have done for the last two years. One house is almost up, another one is coming up, and several people now are gonna be start building their house because we just got the clear. The, the clear situation December last year when, you know, cause in order for you to start building, doing certain things, you have to do certain traditions. And we did that last December. The chief after poor libation, you have to do blood sacrifice, uh, you know, and along with, you know, making sure we pay for the land and full and all those things. So now we're starting to get more people building and things like that. So I don't really know how far and big this thing is going to grow, but uh, you know, we're looking for it to be a long-term generational business. And I want my mm -hmm. son uh, and my future family, and you know my current family and you know and even my family that you know, i have family that we, we were born in jamaica together 
my cousins, and they live in Canada, they live in England, they live all along the East Coast, and some of them are still in Jamaica. And I'm trying to do something where we just where we unite my family to where we can come together again, you know, because it's kind of like one of those things where you just you know, you're reminiscing back in the days when you and your family, you know, you're out there playing and you're out there doing things together, and then you've been divided and split apart. Uh, so it becomes a foundation like that, also. Just basically creating a family legacy and it's not just my family i want everyone to feel like this is their community also and then they can build that legacy and then if we just need more land the chief has more land and then you know like i was mentioning we can get into industrial development because there's another 100 acres that's ready for mm -hmm. industrial development uh, well, let me let me ask you a question right. Right, brother bomani because um and this is just me personally i noticed that when i was came to africa the first time in 2017 um there were some skills that I didn't have that I needed to, to 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 work on in order to make it work. And um, like for me, I lost. Uh, I'm gonna do a story time. I lost my entire team because uh, I was uh, uh, the way I was handling stuff. And um, I noticed I need to have a little bit more patience. I need to be able to have a little bit more soft skills. I need to be able to look at you know how to develop talent a little bit better. Um, those things I didn't have. And a lot of people who are coming over from America who are not. You know, they haven't maybe been entrepreneurs and they will be first time entrepreneurs, maybe stuff like that. Um, they're coming into a situation where maybe they're working with somebody from a different culture um, and or maybe they're trying to get into another industry that they haven't been in before. Like, for example, I know you mentioned all these other industries like agribusiness is really big, definitely in, in Ghana. Right. It's a great opportunity. Um, do you think that some people may need to um, look at the industry that they're trying to get into? maybe go to the States or try to get some learning or training, maybe in Ghana, if it's agribusiness that they want to, you know, pay for trainings or something like that to get good at, at a new skill before, you know, uh, fully moving over there to get things done. Um, because some people might not have all the skills they need to be in Africa or be in Ghana. Do you think that there's some level of, of skill enhancement that a lot of uh, our people from the West will be needing to brush up on before coming or how do they, how do they go about getting those things? Uh, yes. Um, as far as the, the main thing is uh, learn to be patient uh, because uh, I live in a, a county where it does, everything is just organized here. If I go down to the business place, whatever I do, I mean, they get everything done quick, efficient. Uh, Ghana is not like that. You're going to have situations where, you know, it, it's, uh, you know, where like right now I have some business papers um, and, and I talked to my attorney. I was like, he, he told me a week. <laughs> it's been five weeks now. And, um, and me and him have been through this before and I just, you know, I'm, I best been trying my best to be patient. So that's one of the main things. But as far as skills, um, I'm a product of the military and technical school. That's where I learned uh, aircraft maintenance. And, uh, you know, and but not everyone is going to have, uh, you know, these technical skills and things that are ending. You know, I've also built, you know, went to different schools to just learn information technology from, you know, my A plus to network plus to uh, security plus and things like that. Uh, so I would definitely recommend for those who don't have, you know, hardcore skills and they just have only have a college degree because a college degree is good, but you're limited if you're trying to do certain things, uh, you know. So um, technical school here is always a, a good access. And then when you get to Ghana, they do have certain schools in Ghana um, that will help you, you know, you, you know, basically learn more of the culture, learn the language and get more connected to the people. And that, those are things that we're looking to do. We're looking to create an energy to where we can all learn from each other and to where everyone feel like they have a skill that they can contribute. And if nothing else, uh, what we're going to be doing is, uh, you know, you'd be put on the, the farming and then you just learn farming uh, or you'd be put out there on the beach and you just learn how to comb the beach or clean the beach and set things up for the beach to where, you know, eventually we can build docks and we can build shop stores and business on the beach. And, Everyone will get a chance to learn construction because it's going to be a lot of construction going on. So even if you don't want to do heavy construction, you can do the electrical or the electronics part of it, or you can put in the, you know, the systems, you know, whether it's a solar system or and things like that. And all those things are things that you can either get pre-training on or when you get there, if you're a fast learner, because I'm one of the people that like to teach, but also, you know, I, I'm a fa I move fast paced. So I tell people, keep up. And we can always go over the stuff, uh, especially when you're out there practically working on things. Because that's also how I learned uh, in the Navy. I was 18 years old. I didn't know nothing about no aircraft. All I know is that I scored good enough to get the job. And then and now I had to prove myself and make sure I pass all my courses so they can put me out in active, you know, active work duty and things like that. So that's how I look at it. And that's why I said some of the people are coming from the military who are engaged in certain things. They're people who we really, really need. Because they have already served their, their American country. 
now it's time for them to serve their African you know, nation. All right. Um, that's I like how you said that. But now let me let me ask you this because um because the call to Africa is strong, man. Um it's just, it's, it's, it's and when Africa start calling, it's hard to not not answer the call. And um, you know, I, I finally decided to answer it myself. But let me ask you this, brother, because you know, with Ghana, you know, get more developed and more people come in and stuff like that. Two things I want to talk to you about. Obviously, you know, there's this COVID thing that's been going on right now, um, you know, and also the rising costs of, you know, living in West Africa. But I want to first start off with, you know, during COVID. I know that you're still working during COVID with some of the tours. You know, some of the brothers and sisters have complained about these COVID, um, you know, COVID jails or quarantine prisons. Hmm. Uh, with, with false tests in Ghana, and um, I, I know that was a reason why a lot of people uh, went to Tanzania because there was no COVID test yeah. required and all that stuff. But um, what would you say about you know the COVID stuff going in, coming right now during the pandemic? Is it a good time to repack? Um, your your personal observations about that right now? Yes, uh, the way I'm, I'm dedicated to this, um, you know, I've been dedicated from 2004 when I made my commitment that I'm going to keep on going to Africa and we're going to keep building and making things happen. It doesn't matter if World War Four, Five, Six, and Seven kick off, or there's a there's a you know a deadly virus that's killing everybody in the world. You know, once you're committed uh, to a movement and committed to a cause, you stay committed because you know the devil works very hard and uh, is the, the and they're going to always put energy out there to slow you down. So um, I've done my best to get my groups to understand the best thing we can do is follow all of the COVID protocols and be clear on it and then make sure we talk with our hosts in the country and 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 put together a nice logistic uh, game plan and things like that. You know, basically, you know, naval tactics uh, and, and things like that. So uh, it's been okay with myself. I've been able to do uh, four journeys. I did Tanzania in November 2020, Ghana December 2020, Senegal and Gambia April 2021, and then Ghana May 2021. And, um, and that's about about uh, close to about um, 80 people um, we have taken, uh, or I should say close to 60 to 80 people. And, you know, we have had no issues. Um, unfortunately, you do have to take multiple COVID tests. So it's, in, it's been cases that we take a COVID test before we leave and we get to a specific country, we have to take another one. And then we leave, we have to take another one. And that's based on the, uh, the airlines and the actual country. So we just follow that. But um, I feel, um, you know, when you're in a divine mission, you just, you, you, you know, you keep positive and you keep uh, just working on what you're working on. And uh, there's only so much you can control. But uh, some people gave up their business and tourism and things like that. Um, I put too much work and a lot of money into this and a lot of energy into this. And, um, um, and you know, I can't really put my hand on what's really going on. Um, all I know is that I just hear about what people say in their family and what they hear and what they talk about on TV and things like that. Uh, but um, I feel good. I, you know, I, you know, I feel good as far as just keeping it going. But um, you know, we just got to keep on fighting and keep on uh, doing what we need to do because there's never gonna stop being things that's gonna stop us from actually connecting to Africa and uniting and working to, with our people. And I'm not saying this is some kind of conspiracy to stop us from doing what we need to do in Africa. Because what's going on is affecting the globe. It's not just affecting people like myself trying to go to Africa. Right. Uh, so, right. Um, you know, um, I'm literally just, I've, I've been meditating to my ancestors, you know, um, and telling them that, you know, you know, just, just give us the strength and energy for us to keep on doing this because we're almost there. We're almost in a situation where we're going to be able to just really do some good stuff in Africa to where we change the tide of the situation where now we can actually raise our children in Africa with all the resources that they need. All right, brother. So I'll put all of Brother uh, Bomani's um, information. The YouTube channel will put in the first company in the top. Also, his website. You can contact him and all that other stuff. Uh, brother Bomani, for you know um, people who want to uh, subscribe to your YouTube channel, you have about twenty thousand subscribers. Go ahead and give them a pitch as to why they should subscribe to you. Oh uh, yes, family. Uh, Subscribing to the YouTube channel, what I do is um, I do lots of updates as far as our conference calls and preparation for tours, conference call dealing with preparation on living, doing business in Africa, uh, land development opportunities. Uh, and I record all of the tourist videos that we shoot in the country. And also I do things like, you know, whenever there's like a certain celebration, like I enjoy recording uh, Marcus Garvey um, Day uh, in Atlanta. I've done it a few times and I upload those videos. 
and even when we do the RBG Festival, Music Festival, you know, uh, and these are my brothers that are hosting these events. So I come in, I tell them, hey, we we'll shoot some videos and we just put up online and we just educate our people about our culture. And, you know, you always see me wearing the same colors, red, black, and green, or red, black, green, and gold. And that's, uh, you know, the Pan-African color energy. And, you know, we celebrate that, uh, wearing our colors and doing the work. But uh, the, the channel literally have uh, lots of information, or even going to dialogue, that sometimes we have these incredible conversations about relationships. Uh, you know, we do a lot of serious stuff, but also I try to do things where we can just have a little laughter and, and, and get into certain things. So I have a lot of playlists and unique uh, playlists and, and, and topics dealing with many different things. Uh, so you have over 2,750 videos that you can have access to and you can just click and play all. Uh, they're all commercial free and things like that because we make our money from selling business services and things like that um, and uh, consultation and things like that. So uh, we use the, the, the network um, YouTube to literally just showcase and share our information. And I use it right here as presentation to where you know I have people come over and we click and play a few videos and I just you know want more people to see you know, the history of the country that we've been to and you know see how beautiful it is and see all the wonderful things that we do and see this you know, us coming together ultimately as a group of black people from different parts of you know America and different parts of the black world and having a good time working together um, you know, going out, having dinner, socializing. So it's also very powerful just to see us come together because people keep on saying that we can't come together and we can't work together. So the energy that we push out shows that we're working together and things like that. And just one of us keep that dedication going. So, you know, family, you could definitely check that out and also check out the website, uh, Africa for the Africans.org, which is what I have a hundred percent of our information for on from the link into the Twitter to the you know, to the YouTube link, to um, uh, Facebook, to uh, Instagram, and to this uh, a whole lot of this um, uh, photo galleries and things like that. They showcase all of the tours that we have done on. So it's just, you know, it's black empowerment. It's the things that we talk about we should be doing, black cooperative economics. So, um, you know, we have a lot more information coming and I consistently just, I'm always sharing videos. So if you just want to be black empowered and, and you know, you want to share with your friends who speak a certain way about Africa and then they, Think it's a jungle and things like that you, you know they can see some of our videos like last year i was in zanzibar island i swear every day i woke up i thought i was in the grill jamaica but then i had to realize that i'm in tanzania and i need to get myself ready to take my group out uh, on tour all right well we guys will put all information from brother Mamani. thank him for uh you know spending some time with us today and guys as you know keep it real king Ghana forever we out